obviously I'm not because I am uh, I am a pro. Um, I went pro last year in figure. Um, I actually competed in two different divisions for my first time ever. Um, I did jump into wellness. Um, we decided like two weeks before the show that we would try it. Um, we gave it a go, and I was one spot from getting a double pro card. So that was a cool experience. Um, since then, I've kind of just been you know focusing on my off season. Um, I am a teacher as well, so I teach all at the same time as I'm prepping and off seasoning and all of the above. So it can get a, a little bit handful, but, um, and yeah, other than that, I just, I'm just excited for the year to come, honestly, just all around mm -hmm. for me, I've always been an athlete. Um, that's kind of where it just stems from. Um, I played three sports in um, high school, all varsity, and then I went on to play college softball. And then after that, like when I was getting ready to graduate, I was like, I can't not be an athlete. Like I have to be doing something physical because it's just what my body is used to. It's what my brain is used to. Um, and it was kind of like that outlet for me. So I ended up starting, you know, going into a gym here and there as I was still playing ball. This was in my junior year of um, college and I was playing. And then I met a friend and she was competing in bikini at the time. And she's like, oh, you should totally compete. You'd be good, whatever. Um, I never really thought anything of it. And then slowly but surely, I just started training. And then, um, you know, I graduated from college. And then after that, I was like, I'm going to try either powerlifting or bodybuilding and just try it out. But like you said, I mean, it didn't start at like this big goal that like, yeah, I want to be an IFB pro. That was never my goal. I just like essentially got here by doing the things that I love. Um, and I think in terms of bodybuilding, what got me there is really the, just like the love for the training of it. Was the gym or strength conditioning side of the sport for you ever something that you did look forward to? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I do. I loved it. Like it was, it was good because when I was playing softball, I was strength training, but it wasn't obviously to the extent of bodybuilding. It wasn't for physique purposes. It was almost for performance and strength, you know, at bat, whatever. Um, but then like, as I got into the physique portion of it, I started to see that like, this is really truly an art that you can just transform your body and have total control over that by the choices and the dedication that you have to it. So yeah. it just was like a slow, but, you know, steady burning love for it. And now, like, I couldn't imagine my life any other way. Are you a personal trainer, online fitness coach or gym owner on the verge of burnout? Are you wanting to grow your fitness business, but can't add more hours to your hectic schedule? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. Was it like within your history, was it something that your coaches kind of put an emphasis on? Yeah, so it's funny because I mean through all the sports I played, I just remember strength and conditioning. Like it was always doing sprints. It was always making sure we were doing like ab workouts or whatever the case may be. Like they were really, really big into that. And I'm thankful for that because, you know, that plays a huge role in bodybuilding in terms of recovery, in terms of strength and conditioning and, you know, being able to manipulate your body and bring it to a certain type of level. So I do thank my coaches for that because it was at the forefront of a lot of uh, practices and, like, I still think about those circuits to this day. It's it's cool. And switching up your training from more of a performance uh, with a sport aspect to physique-based, um, certainly there's still, like, performance-based things that you can do within bodybuilding. But, like, was it weird for you at all to make that switch up? Yeah, it definitely was weird in the beginning, and I think that's why, I mean, I think this goes for anyone in terms of, like, when you first start, you're not going to progress right away, right? Because it's something you're not good at. It's something that's different to you. It was a different style that I was used to. Um, so, you know, in saying that, like when I first started, I really started with like powerlifting movements, squat, bench, deadlift. I was like obsessed with it. I wanted to be strong. That was like my thing. Um, and then I kind of sort of slowly but surely because of like either back pain or knee pain or whatever, like my joints started to feel that I wasn't supposed to be, you know, training this way. Um, and then I got into, you know, bodybuilding style training, but it's taken a, a good amount of time for me to like slow down my training and really focus to the point where I can train, like to really shape the physique in terms of, you know, muscle mass instead of just performing the movement, so to say, like a sport. It's more than just about getting it done. It's actually about mm -hmm. like really how you do it and taking the time. I mean, mind muscle connection is something you hear about a lot. Um, and just being able to be 
kind of like within that one within that one rep or maybe even sometimes like if it's a if it's a bigger movement you know or really any movement i guess but now like we focus on the eccentric here and the concentric part here mm -hmm. and you really got to focus on kind of both of those and and um yeah just like all that is so important when it comes especially i think too as you do start to maybe get into the a little bit of the higher level and, and the smallest percentage of like of a recognition of an importance of a thing can start to like make the difference. Yep. It, it, the small things are the big things. And that's like one thing that I've always known, but like I'm learning more and more in life is just like in bodybuilding and life in general, the small things are the big things. So how you do one thing is how you do everything. And that really applies when it becomes to being a pro and having to know that, you know, everyone else is hitting their mark. Everyone else is doing what they need to do too. Um, so I need to be on point as well. You know what I mean? It brings it to a different level. Yeah. So it's been interesting. So obviously having some experience in the, in the gym, I think is a great place to, um, to kind of even have an advantage on a lot of people these days, especially is just being like more physically active, being an athlete, you're probably more like aware of your body in space, you know, okay, I, I can feel this without looking at it. I, I kind of know what that feels like, all that kind of stuff. But outside of the physical realm, maybe the gym aspect of it, were there areas that you were maybe a little bit anxious or nervous about? Maybe it'd be the diet or just certain areas of bodybuilding in general that you were just like, I don't have as much knowledge or experience in these areas. Sure. Um, I think maybe the most uncomfortable thing for me in the beginning was like walking in the heels and the whole like stage presence aspect of it actually, because like, you know, I come from the nitty gritty, you know, playing sports and being covered in red dirt from the field and stuff like that. Like the training was never the issue. Um, and the diet, you know, it was obviously hard, but I don't think that was the hardest. I think that the hardest was kind of just me bringing like a different persona and confidence to myself that I didn't necessarily have. Cause I could hide under a hat and, just play of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that was like the weirdest transition for me was like owning the physique that I created. Um, and like the posing and the routine aspect of it was the most uncomfortable. What kind of advice would you give yourself or somebody else, you know, looking back at it? Um, like, is there certain things that you can do? I mean, obviously when you're good at something and you practice it, you become more confident in it, but like, mm -hmm. are there things that you can do um, that you've learned to become more confident on stage, even if you're not like having that on stage time built up. So it's funny because like the way that I think about it is almost like fake it until you make it. Cause that's kind of just what I did. It was just like, I forced myself to just psych myself out and say like, you're going to go out there and you're going to perform and it's going to be great. And it, you know what I mean? Almost just like psych yourself into it mentally and then just make the jump because there's no really seamless way for you to just one day pop up and say, oh, I have the confidence to do X, Y, and Z. So if you don't force yourself and just try to give yourself the confidence to do so, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of hard, but it's just making that jump, you know? And did you picture yourself if, you know, if it was kind of this mental imagery, did you picture yourself doing that? Like, this is what I'm going to like kind of look like and do and be like, or was it more of like, these are people that I see doing it. And so I'm going to like picture myself kind of almost like when I'm on stage as that individual, like, did, did that make sense? That's a good question. Yeah. So it's funny. It was a transition period as well. When I first started uh, for my first shows and, you know, in the beginning when I was not a pro, it was always other people. Like I would, I would watch the Gillen's videos and love Sid, her posing is beautiful. Like I would watch obviously figure pros and I would envision, you know, or try and mimic what I was seeing. Whereas now, and it's funny because the transition was for my pro card. Like that was the first time in training sessions or in cardio sessions that I ever envisioned myself um, on the stage doing my routine instead of someone else. Um, and then I ended up going pro. And now when I look back and I pose, now I see myself instead. So it's almost like I made that image of myself based on experience and based on, you know, time and confidence in, in it. Did the skills from your other, you know, your, your call high school and college sports days, maybe not like the physical ones I'm talking about here, but more along the lines of like, you were talking about like psyching yourself up and, and maybe the mental imagery were those things that you developed in that in that aspect or or were those things that you la later developed in the sports maybe of powerlifting or bodybuilding 
Uh, no, I've always had that. Yeah, I've always had it, but I feel like my mental state has gotten stronger, like as just an overall person and an athlete. But yeah, I mean, the, the mental aspect of any sport is prevalent, especially in bodybuilding. So, you know, thankfully, I, you know, I've always been a hard person on myself. Like I've always downplayed any of my accomplishments and things like that, because I'm always I'm just a go getter. I'm like, OK, did that on to the next thing. Um, and that's how I've been in sports as well. But um, I've learned to be kind of less hard on myself and give myself a little bit more grace, which is helpful. But yeah, the mental the mental game is everything. <laughs> the success is not achieved before the thousands of fails prior. Mm. And I think that that's what people do is that they don't have the grit to just keep going. Like it's it's not easy to start a business. It's not easy to become a pro in bodybuilding. It's not easy, right? Like these things are not easy things. However, you have to want something bad enough to keep going through the mud. Um, and I think a lot of people say that they have a goal or they want to achieve X, Y, Z, but if they really, really, truly want it in their core, they would do everything they could do it to get it. You know what I mean? To, to make that successful. So it's a choice at the end of the day, the better the athlete in bodybuilding, it's obviously, yes, genetics plays a role or whatever, but the one who can work the hardest, the most consistent is nine out of 10 times going to be the most successful person. Mm -hmm. So you know, it really just comes down to how bad do you want it and how much are you willing to, you know, go through the the sacrificial moments to just get it done, you know? And that's like the beauty of it that not everyone can do it. So looking back into when you first really started to kind of get interested in bodybuilding, it's like, okay, is this something I want to do? Who I guess was maybe your uh you, I think you mentioned a friend was was in it, but like did is that where all your kind of info initially came from or where did you kind of seek that out? Yeah, so she um, started uh, competing in bikini, and um, I would see her training at the gym or whatever, and, you know, she told me a little about it, and she's like, oh, come to the show. So I ended up going to the show, and that's what the first time I saw that there was, like, so many different divisions. Um, and I remember watching figure and, like, loving, like, the just the shape and the symmetry of it. Um, and then ended up after the show, I started just researching and seeing, you know, all of the different divisions and stuff like that. Um, and I was following like Cass Martin at the time and like Lauren Finley, who her and I are close friends now. Um, and like Dana Lynn Bailey. And like, I just loved like the muscular, you know, the more muscular division, uh, than bikini. So that's when I kind of, I started in figure and I've been in figure since, mm -hmm. um, a lot of, a lot of people like start somewhere and then they go somewhere else. But yeah, I've just, I'm a figure girl at heart. Um, <laughs> they tried to get me to switch to wellness and I, I did it, but. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with figure right now, but I don't know who knows if in the future, you know, woman's physique or whatever the case may be. It really depends on what they're wanting, mm -hmm. because um, that's like a whole thing is, you know, if they're wanting either more muscular figure girls or, you know, I know they're looking for shape, but some it really depends. Bodybuilders really have to kind of keep an eye out for what is going on, but also maybe where the the, the cycles or the trends are going too. Yeah. I mean, it can make or break you pending the, the trend, you know, the trend, you know, going on because it's, you know, just because you have a beautiful physique doesn't mean you're necessarily going to win. It's what they're looking for um, and what they want at the time. Um, so, yeah, like you said, it's I think it's a pretty cool thing, though, because it opens up all of your categories. Like mm -hmm. even if I, you know, just a lot of women, they'll have babies and then they'll come back and they'll do masters and they'll do a different division. And I just think it's so beautiful how you can like there's so many spans of where you could go with it. Um, yeah. depending on genetics, depending on what works well for your body or how much muscle you want. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. Cause like you said, it's the only sport that really is that has that many things within it. It's crazy to me that like there's people out there who can judge so quickly and, and really very accurately too. I mean, sometimes it's like people get upset because this person didn't win or they thought this person should have been, you know, second or third when they were sure. fourth or fifth, but like in general, there's there's pretty much a consensus of like this is generally a good call like what went down is pretty good and to mm -hmm. me it's just so crazy that like there's people that are that have that eye so well or so trained yeah. their brains are like wired differently to just think that quickly and critically it's crazy I, I always say I'm like I don't know how they do this like there's a the, there's so many competitors and for the length of time that you're looking at people and it's it's a lot I I really give them credit because 
it's 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 crazy once you think about it walk us through a little bit of that initial experience with like going through a prep and getting you know to get ready to go on stage and going on stage and and you kind of mentioned we kind of talked about it before in, in regards to the mental aspect but just really take us kind of through walk us through that initial first experience are you a personal trainer who wants to scale and grow your business online have you been coaching online for years yet don't know how to incorporate online into your current business model introducing trainer revenue multiplier the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. Yeah. So my first show was one I'll never forget because it was obviously my first show and first experience. But looking back and, you know, as a pro now, I can like tell younger competitors, get a coach because I did not have one until like the last two weeks. So I thought I knew I was like able to manipulate my macros and I thought I was eating the right things. I thought I was in a prep. Um, but obviously, you know, I had muscle, but like just body fat, but I was not lean. I was not stage ready. So, um, I did Easterns, which is like the biggest local regional over here and um i placed fifth which was fine but um yeah i just remember like i guess having anxiety obviously because it was my first time but also not like i know that a lot of other people had coaches so that's something that like made me nervous towards the end i'm like wait a minute i shouldn't even like be doing this essentially but i was like you know what let me just get my feet wet um the tanning situation was like really weird for my first time because i was like whoa this is like it, like you don't realize the process of it because obviously you just see, you know, new competitors just see pictures and they're like, Oh, you get a spray tan and you just go on stage. But like being backstage and seeing the expediters lining people up and seeing like people, you know, with their honey and salt backstage or pumping up like that experience was like, I don't know with, when I was within it, I was like, wow, this is like crazy. What goes on behind closed doors that people do not see. Yep. Um, so in that aspect, it was like very, very eye opening things that I had never experienced, um, nerves I had never experienced. And then I just remember like walking out and just blacking out like under the lights in a good way. Um, I just like people are like, oh, you don't notice the people or you don't. And I'm like, you don't really think I don't know. For me personally, I just kind of like something takes over like my, you know, the routine I'm normally doing all the time just comes out. And I don't really see anyone besides like obviously the judges on the panel that I'm looking at, but like everything else goes silent almost. So it's, it was like a cool connection I had never felt with something else other than like in softball, when I stepped into the batter's box, like that's the feeling I would get like everything else drowned out. And it was just that that mattered. So it's almost like a high sensation that like once I experienced that, I was like, wow, this is like going to be my thing. Like, I really, really enjoyed this. And I knew, you know, I I was fifth. So I obviously knew I had a lot of work to do. But like that inspired me. I remember seeing the girls in like the top five or the winner. And I was like, oh, my God, like, that's what I, I want to look like that. Like, that's so beautiful. And and I felt like, you know, I if I worked hard, I would get there. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely a cool experience, something that like I'll never, ever forget. But yeah, it was that's my advice to all young competitors is like, just get a coach. Um because if I had, I probably would have a done better, but b like when would have been able to know my body better and learn it a little bit faster because I would have had someone with more knowledge uh, mm -hmm. leading me. So bodybuilding in general, people are like, oh, it's such a selfish, you know, some people believe this, but they're like, oh, it's a selfish sport or it's a solo sport. And at the end of the day, yes, I am on stage by myself. I am the only one essentially who physically brought myself to this point. I understand that. However, people don't understand the value of the team that you have behind you in terms of allowing you to mentally and physically get to the best place possible where you are a competitor on that stage and you can, you know, essentially win. Like mm -hmm. that is just so important. So like you're saying, like your massage therapist, your um, chiropractor, you're just like all of these people make up an army of people, essentially, of the people who are helping you and protecting you and supporting you. Um, to get you there. So like, that's, that's a huge thing um, to have. And I'm, I'm grateful that I do have a good team behind me. Um, but yeah, it's, 
it's not a one man show at all. <laughs> it's one thing to do it and go through the motions and check the boxes, but it's another thing to be a competitor and, and take it yeah. seriously as a competitor would. That's, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that sets apart the difference between like someone who just competes and someone who's elite in competing. Yeah. Like that's what separ separates the elite athletes from just the athletes is you have the people behind you who want to see you succeed and who are helping you to do that. And, you know, just having the ability to know that you can put your trust in them. Like you said, when you're in those moments where you're either overthinking or you need a mental check or you need someone to be like, listen, you need, you know, you need the rest or whatever the case may be. Having people that look out for you is, is something that I value a lot. For you, when you got off stage that first time, was it something where you felt like this is, I have potential here. Like I, I can, I can see myself becoming a pro or like having the potential at least to become a pro or, or when did you kind of gain that? I don't know if it's confidence or, or if it's gaining like a, a sense of what's possible or, or whatever you call it. But when did you really gain that to say like, okay, maybe I can move forward pretty good in this sport. I never saw my, I never saw myself becoming a pro until I guess when I was prepping for my, my date, my, uh, the nationals. And I, when I went, pro like a couple weeks before but until that point I really just loved the competitive aspect of beating my past self and I think that's what kept me going um in that first show I placed fifth and I was like it was a huge show so people were like oh my god top five like that's huge top five in a regional show and you you're 19 like I was young I, I didn't know what I was doing so essentially it was good at the time I was a junior you know so like from that, I was like, wait, these people that know this thing think that I'm, I have potential. So that, you know, lit my fire and I loved the training of it. So then I competed again and I won an overall, I won another overall and I won another, like I just kept winning. So I was like, this is something that clearly I'm good at, you know, and, and they're liking the physiques that I'm bringing. Um, and that's when I started getting like more competitive with it. The more that I was winning, the more that I was seeing other girls at my height class and my division, like, and I was just, you know, taking them out essentially. Like I, I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. Um, and then, yeah, when I was prepping for, um, nationals, I mean, I've just always been a really hard person. <laughs> like I've, I've been a really tough, tough critic. Um, like I even look at pictures from nationals and I'm like, eh, I, I'm going to bring better. Like I will be better. And I do need to do a better job of giving myself more grace when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, I really didn't, I, I was honestly even nervous for nationals. Cause I like, obviously your friends and family, they're like, Oh, you're going to, you know, of course they're like, you're going to win. Like, but I'm like, no, it's not over until it's over. Cause you know, you don't know who's showing up and you don't know what you're going to compare like mm -hmm. on the stage under the lights. So, um, yeah, I wasn't confident until I was called out and then I knew I was in first call outs and I was in the center. Just, but that's just me mentally, like, you know, keeping myself in check always. Um, like, I always work like I'm the underdog. I always work like I, I have something to prove or, you know, that I haven't done a thing and I hadn't. And then, you know, I went pro and I was like, okay, I guess I'm okay with this thing. <laughs> Let's see how we do for the debut. A lot of people compete for a lot of different reasons. Some of them are um, because of their heart and soul, like the people who love training and they love just beating themselves like their old ver old versions of themselves and trying to get that 1% better each and every day. Um, and then there's people who do it, you know, either for the clout of it or for the title of it. And, you know, whether you do it for that or whatever your reason is, you know, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's an interesting thought. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know. It's just, I guess, it is in terms of longevity, like you said, when it is from a, a genuine purpose and reason, you will stay in it longer, essentially, because you're doing what you love, right? And you're putting that passion in each and every day. And that's something that's sustainable for you. Whereas if you work to only achieve a title and then you achieve that, that title and you're comfortable with, you know, sitting with it and that's it, you know, you have the cloud of it and you're happy about it. You know, there's also those people, too. So it really does depend. Like a lot of people go pro and they don't do anything with it. They just are like happy, you know, I, I did what I did and that's it. Whereas there's people that are just like, I just want to continually get better. And then, like you said, there's those that 
haven't even done a show and they're like, I want to go to Olympia. But it's like, you need to know the steps that it takes to get there. And you need to be in love with the work that it takes to get there before you're in love with the actual thing. And I think that's what takes quality athletes far is when you are in love with the work, it you just, you have so much more benefit than as opposed to you're just focused in on the one thing that you desire. And you're so worried about getting there. You're not really taking the focus on the actual work that it's taking to get there. Now that you have turned pro and you kind of have to like re maybe relook at things in it, in it, it all, is it weird that you kind of like look out there and see that like, there's so many different people who've got here so many different ways. I think it's cool. You bring that up. Cause like, I always think it's crazy to like, competitors are coming from all over the world. You don't know what types of gym they're training in and what types of weather conditions. You know what I mean? Like I think about me, I'm like, it's, it was five o'clock earlier and it's like pitch black in New York and like everyone's miserable here. Like the holidays are over. It's just, everything is gray and freezing. And I'm like, imagine I lived in like Miami or something. And I'm like, I could be leaving the gym and there's pops. Like, it's just crazy how, like, like you said, you don't know what you're standing up against, whether it's someone who, has a full-time career or they're only bodybuilding. That's another thing. Like Mm -hmm. it's very rare that someone is teaching and also still, you know, becoming a pro and doing all of those things. Like that was a hard thing to do. So I always think to myself, like that's, it's pretty cool because not a lot of people can do that. Like a lot of competitors are, you know, they either have, you know, either like jobs from home or, you know, they have like more of a flexible schedule, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to think about. Mm -hmm. Um, but finding my own way is the best way. And I I think that goes for everyone is like, you are the only one in your skin and your body with your genetics, with your emotions, with your work ethic, with your grit. Um, and no one can take that away from you. So finding really what works for you in terms of, you know, where you train best or what works for you, like when you do your cardio or what, you know, one, it's not a one size fit it's all thing and that's bodybuilding is like that's the beauty of and the art of it is there's so many different like forms of diversity in so many different areas and that's that's a beautiful thing this podcast is sponsored by smoking gun coffee a veteran-owned coffee company that strives to give back to those in need don't forget to use code twr10 for a 10 percent discount at checkout I, i guess from like when you started your life was it probably looked different. You had a different routine. You had different things going on. So how, how have you had to like, or how, how do you take the evolution of your life also into consideration? Yeah. So, I mean, it is, it's a busy schedule. It really is. And like some days it's, it's hard to, I won't lie. It's hard to balance the teaching and the bodybuilding. Cause it's all, I, I tell my friends, I'm like, I feel like I'm Hannah Montana some days. <laughs> like I go to work and I'm miss a all day with my kids. And, and then I like, clock out, go home. I change, I eat my next meal. And then I'm to the gym, like, and I'm a totally different person. Like, it's just a different persona. It's a different energy. It's a different vibe, you know? Um, but that being said, as of now, I can't picture myself like making that transition, um, to just do bodybuilding, maybe essentially one day, I'm not sure. But as of now, it's really just like time management is really the biggest thing. Um, I've moved, throughout the span of me, um, you know, bodybuilding and and doing shows and I was doing it in college for a while. So like, I'm kind of gotten used to, you know, you make it work, Mm -hmm. you know, like I know that we're like in love with structure and routine and I'm like a robot when it comes to that. (laughs) I malfunction when I don't have it, but at the same time I can make the changes needed in order to get something done. So. Well, do you also feel that that kind of brings your life a little balanced? Yeah. I definitely do. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to think like, obviously Olympians, like, you know, they do like business things and stuff like that, but like, essentially they, they wake up, they train, they eat, like everything is solely focused on that. Whereas like when I'm at work, I can't focus on myself at all. Like I'm, I'm all focused on my students. Mm -hmm. So, um, it definitely distracts me in a different type of way. And it's, it's not until like three 45 that my kids, are like gone and I'm at my desk and it's silent that I'm like, Oh shit, I have to go train later. <laughs> like I had, like now I have to transition my brain to like lock in, refocus and just, you know, go into a different overdrive. So it's cool. Cause I can turn it on and turn it off when I want to, you know, like I like to just be miss a at work. I, I don't like to, you know, 
like my coworkers notice obviously that I'm a bodybuilder and like I went pro and stuff and they ask me questions or whatever, but it's cool that I can almost do like both lives. Yeah. Um, and like just enjoy the moments of them when I'm in the moment. Do you ever feel like you have this like power of information that you can like almost be a role model for your students in the way that like obviously they're not gonna be like asking you in-depth questions or you're not going to be talking right. about like nutrition on, on these levels, but like that you can almost like give like little pieces of advice when the, when the time is right, because you do have this information that maybe most other people in their life don't, don't have. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly love like giving those seeds of knowledge to my kids in moments where like, you, you know, right. Like those teaching moments. I think that's my favorite thing about teaching is like those moments where we're not talking about ELA or math or we would just completely went off track or like something like a life skill happened and I can just teach something that they will forever have in their pocket and need as opposed to like a math problem. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do like to like, I talk goal setting with them and I talk about like perseverance and grit and like just teaching them like all of those vocabulary words that essentially I learned from bodybuilding or from being an athlete, but that just are applicable to every other thing in life. Um, like I, I always have those conversations with them and every morning we have morning meeting and we talk about like the goals that we're setting and the things that we want to accomplish, our failures, something that we're upset that we failed about, like just having those conversations with them in terms of mindset and in terms of just setting goals and becoming a quality human that wants to get better. Like mm -hmm. I am setting that example for them. So I do use it in that light. Yeah. I think they're at a perfect age too, where like, you know, high school teachers, they have, it, it's a little harder to form someone because at that point, they're kind of already humans. They are, have their own personalities. They have their own girlfriend, boyfriends, like they're too cool for school. So the age that I have is kindergarten and they're five and six. And so like that age is like, they're, they are sponges. Mm -hmm. And like, in terms of what we were saying, like how you just have to leave them with like little gems. They were playing centers the other day. So I gave them like 10 minutes of free time and I overheard them like pretending to uh, play teacher and I just heard like one of my girls saying the phrases that I say to them all the time, like either when they spill something or whatever, or um, she said something and she was like, it's okay. Tomorrow's a new day. Miss I always says that tomorrow's a new day. And I'm like, it's crazy to think like those short little things they're going to really take with them forever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool to see them like reciting back the things that I'm teaching them to help them in moments where they're, you know, struggling to communicate with someone or, they need like a coping mechanisms, like hearing them recite that back is like the most valuable thing in the world. And I, I care far more about that than any amount of curriculum that I have to teach them, you know, mm -hmm. like that's the most important thing to me is that they leave kind and they leave, you know, knowing that they have different skills for life rather than, you know, just passing a test. Yeah. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you're cutting corners or someone in your circle is not necessarily on it like these are all temptations that you're gonna just be like oh well eh, i'll just like kind of sort of do this one thing and then you know that can take over everything it's an exciting year it's an exciting you know to be at the starting point mm -hmm. i'm excited it's gonna be a good one it really is i mean time is already flying and i'm gonna be st starting prep soon and debuting in the summer so it's it's a big year it's a lot of good things coming it's exciting the best of luck moving forward into you know your your prep season and and getting to step on the stage for, you know, the first time this, this upcoming season, best of luck with that, but, uh, stay healthy and, uh, just kind of you know, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Of course. Thank you for having me. hundred percent. And if you want to, before we head out, if you want to share your socials or anything like that, you can. Sure. Okay. So my Instagram and my TikTok is Amanda Dovar six, five, four. And that's all I got really. <laughs> it's just, just those two things. If you're tired of searching for a coach or trainer, somebody who knows what they're talking about and has experience, make sure you go check out the new Coach's Corner on weightroompodcast.com. You can find quality, qualified coaches to help you achieve your goals, whether that's in bodybuilding or just general fitness. Stop wasting time and start achieving your goals today. The link to the Coach's Corner is down in the description below.